What's up everyone? This is me, Saad, with another video. Now, I've been getting a lot of requests to cover probability, so here I am. I've chosen the concept that involves probability without replacement, and the reason behind is this is the one concept that students, a lot of students, struggle with. So we're gonna we're gonna fix that through this video, hopefully. So here I've set up a scenario. So we have Clark, who goes to a mall where he sees a gumball dispensing machine. Now I'm sure you guys are familiar with what that is. He realizes that the gumball machine dispenses gumballs randomly, meaning there is no specific order to it. Given that there are four blue, three red, and one green gumball left. Clark draws two balls randomly without replacement. Find the probability that. Now, I've, per I've uh, on purpose left that part out because the first thing that you and I need to learn is how to draw a tree diagram and why is it so important. So the tree diagram takes into consideration all the possible outcomes that we can have, all right? which is why it's very important. So here's Clark. Now, it's his first time that he's drawing a gumball, right? So let's see how many options does he have, meaning how many how many unique outcomes can he end up with? So he can end up with either a blue, a red, or a green gumball in his hand. So that means when I'm drawing for the first attempt or the first draw, I'm going to make a tree with three branches, right? One for each color. So he could end up with a blue gumball, right? So let's give this branch to blue. He could end up with a red one, right? So let's give this one to red, or he could end up with a green one. So let's just give this one to green. Now let's try and figure out the probability of ending up with a blue gumball. So for that, we use the basic formula for probability, which is favorable upon total, right? I'll just write it here in the corner. So the one formula that you need to know for probability is that it's equal to favorable outcomes upon the total outcome. So if I'm talking about the probability of blue, I'm interested in finding out the number of blue gumballs and the total. So here I can see that the number of blue gumballs happen to be four and the number of total happen to be eight, all right? I don't know why I wrote seven. And the number of total happens to be eight. So that's taken care of. Now let's talk about the probability of ending up with the red ones. So that we can see is equal to three over eight. And let's talk about the probability of ending up with a green one so that we can see it's 1 over 8 since we have 1 green and 8 is the total. Now, let's assume that he ends up, in the first attempt, he ends up with a blue gumball in his hand. Alright, so remember, we are under the assumption that the first gumball turns out to be blue. Now, what does that mean? That means I'm going to take a blue gumball and I'm going to put it in his hand. Alright, well, I'm sure that'll do. So, now it's his second attempt. Now, again, we can see that in the second attempt, there are three unique outcomes. That means uh, he can end up with three unique colors again. So that means the tree that I'm going to draw is going to again have how many branches? Three branches. Yep. I th I'm pretty sure you, go. you got that right. So one for blue. But now let's see the probability of drawing a blue combo. So we can see that the number of blue is not four anymore. It has gone down to three. And we can also see that the total is not 8 anymore, it has gone down to 7, right? Because this is, this is without replacement. So that means once he draws one, obviously he can't put it back in the bag. That would be cheating. So, now let's talk about red. So, the number of red has remained the same, which is 3, but the total, as we can see, has gone down by 1, so that means the total is now 7. And it's pretty much the same case with green. The number of green has remained the same, but the total has gone down by 1, so that's equal to 1 by 7. Alright, so that was under the assumption that the first gumball turns out to be blue, but that may not be the case, alright? So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put this blue back, to the back inside the machine, and I'm going to assume that the first one turns out to be red, alright? So, let's give Clark a red gumball, alright? I hope he's happy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to see that fine, uh, the first one is red. So what are the number of colors that he could end up with in the second attempt? So again, I can see that's equal to three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another tree. I hope I have enough space. Yeah, I think I do. Just squeeze it in. So here we have one branch per color. So this is for blue, right? So now let's see what's the probability of drawing a blue gumball in the second attempt, right? So we can see that the blue has remained the same, meaning it's 4, but the total has gone down by 1, so that's equal to 7, all right? I'm color coding it so that you guys don't get confused. And let's see the probability of drawing a red one. So we can see that the number of red gumballs are now 2, since 1 is in his hand, and the total has gone down by 1. And let's talk about the green ones. So green, we can see, is 1. And the total, as we can see, has gone down by 1. So that's equal to 1 over 7. All right? 
Okay, but that was again under the impression that this first one turns out to be red, but that may not be the case. Why? Because we also have a green one here. So what if he ends up with a green one in the first attempt? Then let's see what happens. So let's let's give Clark a green one. Now, if the first one turns out to be green, now you gotta be careful here. Why? Because in the second attempt, you can't have green anymore because there were there was just one green to begin with. All right. So in the second attempt, he could just have he could just he could only end up with a blue one or a red one. So the probability of green will now be zero, and we're just not gonna make it to begin with. So he could end up with a blue one. Now the probability of blue is equal to four, and the total is equal to seven. Or he could end up with, oops, not a green one, he could end up with a red one. So the probability of red is equal to 3 over 7. So this is how you make a tree diagram of a scenario where you're drawing objects without replacement. If you like this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you guys stay updated. Next video, I'm going to be writing down the possible questions that the examiner may ask in a scenario like this. So make sure that you watch that video as well in the till the very end. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Allah Hafiz.